Hey guys, I hope you guys are doing good today and welcome to the today's video. So on today's video, we will be talking about something on MQs, basically message queuing systems. So we will be talking about fully on 10 core uh, differences between RabbitMQ and ActiveMQ versus Kafka. Okay, so this is the things that we are going to talk about today. So without wasting time, just get into the video. So first we have to understand what is RabbitMQ, ActiveMQ and Kafka. So these are all, all popular open source technologies and messaging brokers that are designed to handle and manage the messages between applications and servers and systems. ActiveMQ is messaging broker that implements an advanced message queuing protocol and is based on ERLang programming language. It provides flexible and reliable messaging systems that enables application to communicate with each other using varieties of messaging patterns, including point-to-point, -point, publish and subscribe and all those things. Kafka, on the other hand, it's a distributed streaming platform that is designed for real-time data processing and streaming. It is based on public, uh, sorry, publish and uh, subscribe model and is optimized for high throughput and low latency. So Kafka, it provides a distributed architecture with cluster of brokers that enables data to be partitioned across multiple nodes. ActiveMQ. So ActiveMQ is an another messaging broker that supports multiple protocol, including AMQP, uh, MQTT, and STOMP. So it provides a flexible and extensive uh, messaging systems that can be used for varieties of messaging patterns. So it's including point-to-point, -point, same, publish, and subscribe. ActiveMQ is also provides a support for feature messaging persistency, uh, messaging filtering, and message transformation, and all those things. So this is all about what is RabbitMQ, Kafka, and ActiveMQ. So let's get into the points. So the first core difference that we're going to talk about is on messaging model. So RabbitMQ and ActiveMQ are based on advanced message queuing protocol, we named as AMQP, and it supports traditional messaging patterns where messages are stored in queue and processed in a sequential orders. What about in Kafka? So let's see. So in Kafka, on another hand, it is based on publish subscribe model where messages are broadcast to the all subscribers. So number two is all about talking about on architecture. So basically, RabbitMQ and ActiveMQ have a central broker that manage messaging while in Kafka has a distributed architecture with clusters of brokers. That's the core difference on the architecture. So number three is all about scalability. So let's check it. So Kafka is designed to handle a large volume of data and high throughput, making it a good choice of real-time data streaming and processing. On RabbitMQ and ActiveMQ, it's better suited for a traditional messaging patterns where messages are stored in a queue and processed in a sequen sequential order. So number four is all about persistency. It's completely known as persistence. The Kafka is designed to persist a message to disk and even in an event of failure, actually. So in RabbitMQ and ActiveMQ provides a wide varieties of options for message persistency and reliability. So number five is all about protocol support. So RabbitMQ and ActiveMQ supports uh, the wide varieties of protocols, including AM. QP and MQTT and STOMP. So these protocols, it's supported by RabbitMQ and AppTMQ. On another end, Kafka supports its own binary protocol as well as REST protocol. And this is the, the main core difference on the, the protocol supports. So number six is all about latency. Uh, so the Kafka is designed for low latency processing, while in RabbitMQ and ActiveMQ are optimized for reliable messaging with less emphasis on latency. So number seven is all about on consumer groups. So this is like Kafka supports the concepts of consumer groups, so which allows multiple consumers to read from a single topic, while in ActiveMQ and RabbitMQ do not have this feature natively. So number eight is known as partitioning. So Kafka allows data to be partitioned across multiple brokers. So which enables high availability and parallel processing. So on RabbitMQ and ActiveMQ do not have this native support for partitioning. So number nine is data processing. So Kafka provides a rich set of tools for data processing and including streaming processing and analytics, real-time analytics. 
So in RabbitMQ and ActiveMQ are primarily focused on reliable messages and do not have a same level of data processing capabilities. So number 10 is known as community. So all three message brokers have active communities and support. But Kafka has seen a surge in popularity in recent years thanks to its use and real-time data processing and streaming. So RabbitMQ and ActiveMQ have around for longer and have more established user base in enterprise environments. So that's all I have, guys. I hope you might have enjoyed this particular video. We'll see you on another good lecture. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.